this is a simple smart contract we have written for a hotel industry and this contract keep the track of entire activities happening in that particular hotel so it will keep the track of the hotel tenant with an address it will keep the track of hotel landlord with an address it will contain the information about the number of rooms are there in the hotel number of agreement number of tenants so it will keep all the track of this important information and here you can see here we have this truck which has this multiple data type okay so we're going to talk about all these data type which you can see in detail in this video i just want to give you a complete overview that how contract look like and how you have to build the contract in solid okay so this is the struct for room okay so every single room will have a unique id number unique agreement number unique address so all the data we're going to define inside this truck and who is the tenant who is the landlord whether the room is vacant or not when the time of booking then security deposit payment per month address name agreement room id okay so all these data will define to every single room whenever we add into our hotel okay and mapping is huge addition to the solitary smart contract it is just act like an array okay so every single room will have this unique properties okay so if we want to find out the entire details of this particular room all we have to do is to pass the room id into this mapping and we can easily able to access all the data you can see here we're going to do this in practical okay so this is the room we have struck for the room this is the mapping for the room we have now we have another struck for the agreement okay so whenever any user will have an agreement they book an hotel room all this property will assign so it will have a unique id agreement number room name address monthly payment deposit all the thing will, will assign automatically okay and we have a mapping for that okay so if you have an id and you wanted to find out any find out the information about the agreement so you can pass the id of this and you will have the information so mapping generally act like an array okay we have nested mapping which we're going to talk about okay just follow along with me what is happening here and we have another struct which is a rent so whenever any tenant will pay the rent all the property would be assigned to that particular payment so it will have a unique id unique agreement and all the information so if we want to find out the information about that particular payment we can simply pass the id here and we'll get all the information and here on the top you can see here we are keeping the track of the total number of rent we are receiving into this contract okay so we can easily able to access from here as well so this is the agreement for the this is the agreement and here we have the rent let me close all this and close this one as well and we have a mapping for the rent as well and this modifier is a huge addition into the sorority programming language it allow you to write more secure code because your contract will contain a lot of sensitive data money so it's always very good that you have to write more secure code and in that scenario modifier plays a very important role so what it does it will keep the abstraction for example you have a condition which you want that user should fulfill and then you want to execute the code further okay so in such scenario what do you do you can take the abstraction of that condition and make convert into a modifier and all you have to do is to call this modifier wherever you want no matter in how many function okay so this will save a lot of bug in your code and you can easily able to write less code and you can check multiple condition with the same function okay we're going to have a complete detail on this we're going to find out that what are the ways we can write the modifier you can see this is the simple way i have written and what are the places you can add modifier okay in your smart contract so here i've created multiple modifier first one is for the landlord so i have to check certain function functions should be called by the landlord not by the tenant okay we have a not landlord functions we have a not only while vacant modifier we have this in a friend modifier we have this agreement fee modifier we have the same tenant modifier we have this agreement time left modifier we have the agreement times of modifier we have the rent times of modifier you can write your smart contract without using this modifier but it's always great that you should use it because it's allow you to write more secure code okay and here we have the very first function which allow us to add room into a smart contract and that we have to pass couple of data we have to pass the name address rent cost security deposit and we can simply changing all the data here you can see here we are calling this struct we have created for the room on top here so here we have the room this one this room struct and we are updating all this data whenever any room get added into our contract okay and that's all you can able to find here okay so we are increasing the room number we are making to vacant to true 
and we are updating all this data okay so we're going to talk about each of these data type each of this function and how we can call the struct everything in detail i just want to give you a complete overview that how the smart contract look and what are the function exactly there and how this contract is happening okay so this is for the add room we have the same we have another function for the sign agreement so if anybody wants to book a room into this contract so this is the function they're going to call all they have to do is to pass the room id and they have to follow this couple of modifier which we have to add it here okay so this function cannot be called by the landlord the one who created this contract and the one who tried to book the hotel room they have to have enough money and it only and this this booking can only be happen when the particular room is empty okay so these are the couple of condition we are checking which we have extracted as a modifier here okay so you can see how life saving it is and here once we are passing all these things we are simply updating all this data okay so we are updating all this agreement data here which is very simple okay right now i believe that it's makes complicated but this is very simple we're going to cover in detail don't need to worry about it okay so this is a sign agreement function we have and now we have another function called pay rent so if a tenant want to pay the rent so all they have to do is to call this room id number and it will do all this check and then they can simply update the make their payment okay here we are changing all the state we have another function for agreement completed okay so whenever any agreement will happen it will happen for a specific time period so that's why we have the timestamp in our stock okay so on the base of that we are checking that whether the agreement still exists if it exists then let it be like that but if it, if it exceeds then the normal agreement time then they're going to simply transfer the entire deposit deposit okay so here we are simply tenant transfer to the security deposit so they are transferring some money which the tenant has provided as sticker deposit and they are taking from there okay so that's what we are doing here here we have the last function which is called agreement tenant so if a user don't want to be in the hotel and they want to cancel the agreement all they have to do is to simply make this call okay they have to pass an id it will fulfill all this condition and it will come true okay so that's the simple smart contract for a hotel industry you can add a lot of thing you can add a lot of security right this is a very simple smart contract we have built for the hotel industry okay and you have noticed one thing that here i have used this 0.5.16 version because when i was learning this is the contract we had i had built exactly at that point of time okay so this is what i have built so i thought let's let me give you a complete overview in the same contract which i built at the very first time when i started learning this sort of smart contract and this is the version i have used at that point of time okay but don't need to worry about it because very soon i'm going to build an application using the smart contract because we have the smart contract and we're going to build a web3 application where a user can come and book hotel room okay so we're going to create an application on that so if you guys really want me to create using what technology whether i whether i should use typescript whether i should use react next years so do let me know what technology should i use to build this entire web3 application okay it's going to be a very good portfolio application which you can add in your resume so this is how the smart contract looks like in the real world and don't need to worry again we're going to have a detailed discussion on each of these topics each of this address unit struct uh, variable style how the, we have to write more secure code in details okay we're going to take one step at a time because i want you to understand everything in detail okay because when you will go to the interview right now salty and blockchain is in the early stage okay so nobody has the deep understanding in terms of security in terms of language so you have to know every little thing about the salty smart contract so you can easily able to answer because they're going to ask you more in the technical side okay so you have to know that how to use struct how to retrieve data from the struct how to update the step data how to use mapping how to use nested mapping so all lot of things we have to do okay so you can see this is the pragma sorted version i have used in my contract and the moment i will come in the deploying section you can see that here where it is here you can see that it will automatically discharge that i'm using this pragma sorted version and it will pick this here okay so here you will find all the sorted version which you can use to write your smart contract but i would recommend you to go with the latest one which is 0.8.70 it's a recent delete but this is the program we have written in the call say 5 it's a 516 okay so this is the one we have used 
so make sure no matter what solid version you use make sure to check it from here and try to use the latest one because that will come with a lot of security and good stuff okay so that's the only thing i want to cover i hope you will have a complete understanding that how the smart contract exactly work in the real world and how you can create what are the conditions you have to fill okay so when you write your smart contract the very first thing you have to do is you have to picture the entire contract that what you exactly want to do with that smart contract in case of photo industry you have seen that that we have keep the important information in consideration like tenant landlord number of room agreement rent and according to that we have built all the functionality that there should be an agreement struck there should be a room struck there should be a payment system okay so you have to always write down that what are the functionality you want to have in your smart contract and then you can build on top of it okay and this that's the strategy we're going to follow because from the very beginning i want you to think that how you have to write and how you have to write the smart contract not only just writing how you have to make it more secure because that's the most important thing so i don't want to extend this video too long that's the only thing i want to cover in this video in the next video we're going to write the first function in our solid smart contract and how you can write your own function okay with that said i'm ending this video let's move to the next one where we're going to write the first application in our solid smart contract so let's meet there